The Supreme Court cleared the way for a transgender woman to sue a Virginia men's prison for allegedly violating a federal law that prohibits discrimination based on disability. A prison official named in the lawsuit had appealed for the court to block the proceedings but was declined, meaning that the suit will now go forward. The plaintiff, Kesha Williams, was held for six months in jail at Fairfax County. She is suing several people connected to the jail, saying that the way she was treated at the facility was a violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Among other things, Williams, who had been initially assigned to the women's housing at the facility, but was later moved to its men's housing, claimed in her suit that she had experienced delays in her medical treatment of gender dysphoria. She was harassed by other inmates. The lawsuit will now move forward in the courts. Earlier this year, Governor Glenn Youngkin announced the release of $30 million in learning recovery grants aimed at helping parents get education services for children feeling the impact of pandemic learning loss. But now parents are reaching out to the CBS 6 problem solver saying they are having trouble using that money. Gabrielle Savella says she was approved for $3,000 for each of her two kids, but after she tried to use the funds at an online store on three separate occasions, her orders were all rejected. She told her Tyler Lane she's beyond frustrated and just wants to give her kids a proper education. Very, very, very angry. Very angry. I feel like they set parents up in a sense to fail. In a new message just issued last week, the state now says the grants cannot be used to pay for services in advance. Parents could only be reimbursed after the service has already been provided. The Virginia Department of Education and Governor Yunkin have not responded to our request for more information. Raise a glass for a good cause. Yeah, the Richmond SPCA is teaming up with Stone Brewing for its pause on the patio event. It's being held Saturday, July 16th from noon to 6. 10% of all draft sales will help support the SPCA's life-saving work. Stone Brewing is located on Williamsburg Avenue in Richmond. The brewery says well-behaved pets are welcome at pause on the patio. All pets must be leashed. All right. 610 right now. Let's get a look at your 4th of July forecast with Tom. Good morning, Tom. All right. Good morning, ladies. Today, uh, storm chances are much lower than yesterday, if not non-existent. But I still think there's a slight, ever so slight chance of a shower later. But most of us will stay dry today. Still warm, very humid. We'll look for a high of 92. Flying squirrels look good tonight. There could be just a passing shower as we go into the late afternoon, but we're really not expecting much less than 20%. Fireworks tonight look great out at the diamond sold out out there. All right, let's show you what is happening in the wind world of window our window world world view outside and it's a beautiful butterfly and I think this is captured captioned big fan of butterflies from the Martins big fan of butterflies. Thank you Martins. That's a beautiful butterfly is that I think that's called a swallowtail there. I'm usually 40% correct when I guess. <laughs> All right, fix at WTVR.com. Ladies, back to you. 40%, that's high. <laughs> well, if you plan on going to the airport, be prepared to see a whole lot of people. Why this year's 4th of July holiday is causing travel headaches for everyone and the reactions from passengers. Plus, we're following breaking news. Another mass shooting in America, this time in Philadelphia. What police say happened and what the suspect was carrying when taken into custody. Breaking news. Police in Philadelphia are investigating a shooting that leaves four people dead and two children injured. Police say someone opened fire 50 times in a southwest neighborhood using an AR style rifle. The suspect, who is now in custody, wore a bulletproof vest and had several magazines of ammunition and a police scanner. The two children who were shot are in stable condition. Investigators are still trying to figure out a motive. Here's a look at some of your top stories. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is calling on President Biden to invite Ukraine to join NATO. He says an invitation would be a big motivator for Ukrainian soldiers. The request comes amid heavy fighting in the eastern part of the country. Severe weather is threatening to upend the 4th of July plans for millions of Americans. Thunderstorms could bring damaging winds and large hail to the central and northern plains. Meanwhile, record-breaking heat is expected to scorch parts of the Pacific Northwest. Forecasters say places in Oregon and California could see triple-digit temperatures. 
Travelers are bracing for more possible flight disruptions with severe weather continuing to roll through parts of the country. More than 300 flights have been delayed or canceled in the U.S., according to FlightAware. And travel experts expect this 4th of July will have record-breaking numbers. Over the past 10 days, severe weather and staffing shortages caused thousands of flight cancellations and delays. More storms are expected to move through the Northeast today. United Airlines says it dished out 30,000 flyer miles to customers whose flights were canceled or delayed last week. Some passengers say they're hoping for the best. I'm really like overwhelmed. This is too much. I just want to get to Los Angeles. I'm hoping that I traveled the right time here and I'm hoping that going back is the right time as well. AAA predicts more than 4 million Americans will fly today and more than 43 million will choose to drive. If you are hitting the road today, AAA says the busiest times to travel are between noon and 3 p.m. Three months after a deadly tornado wreaked havoc in Rolling Fork, Mississippi, families are still worried about how they'll put their lives back together. Now a nonprofit in Hanover is planning another trip to the area to continue helping recovery efforts. Renata Harris with the Brown Grove Preservation Group says that she still thinks about the town and residents of Rolling Fork almost daily. Our Shelby Brown covered the group's trip to the area to bring relief to families following the storms. After that story aired, other nonprofits started asking about an extended community to community outreach. Now, Harris says that a new project to pack up an 18-wheeler full of needed items was born with hopes to deliver them before Christmas. Watching, you know, news stories on TV and you just seeing the devastation on TV is totally different than being there and looking around you and hearing the birds chirp and seeing the devastation, looking at the trees that are uprooted, looking at the water tower bent over. There is nothing that can prepare you for that feeling that you get when you are there. It's surreal. And that is one of the reasons why we're going back. In the next few weeks, Harris says that there will be a meeting for nonprofits and service organizations who want to join this effort. Of course, we'll share that information on air and online when the date is set. All right, it is 618. Let's get a look at your holiday forecast. Here is Tom. How are you doing, Tom? All right, good morning, ladies. It's uh, nice and warm. It's another warm mm -hmm. start. Not quite as humid as yesterday morning. Now, the average for today is still 89. It's about as hot as we get for an average. Today will be a little bit above that. We'll make it to the lower 90s. Sun sets at 834 for your firework plans. The record 100 back in 2002, and I seem to remember that being a very dry summer and leading into fall is very dry as well. 74 is the current temperature. The dew point has fallen since yesterday. At this time, it was about 74. So 70 is still quite humid, but not quite as humid as yesterday morning. I can tell the subtle difference out here, believe it or not. And that's allowed a few 60s to fall into the west, but generally the low to mid 70s all around the metro. Lots of rain for some yesterday. It kind of skipped around the metro. It started in uh, parts of Hanover County, moved toward uh, parts of Richmond and Essex and Caroline County, and over toward Lancaster County. Northumberland got a little bit of rain and then really picked up south south of town, southern Chesterfield through uh, parts of, um, oh boy, Prince Edward County, uh, Goochland County, not Goochland County, Nottoway County, Amelia County, down into parts of Dinwiddie, Prince George, all got some rain last night and even very early this morning. That's now out of the picture. All right, well, we have a front coming through, therefore it's just a touch cooler, a touch drier today. Still hot and humid though, just not quite as hot and humid as yesterday. Partly sunny skies, hot and humid 92. Storm chances are below 20%, so not putting it in the forecast, but it's not quite zero either. It's hard to say there won't be any showers. There could be a couple little spots, but generally most of us stay dry. Any severe weather, just a marginal risk east and southeast of the city of Richmond, and that's about it. So today there could be a spot here or there as we go into the late afternoon or evening hours, but around firework time, nine o'clock, I think most of that is gone if any of it does form. And then tomorrow our chance will go up a little bit more. I think we'll go back to 20% tomorrow and the better chance will be south side tomorrow.
but then by Thursday it picks up again a little bit about 30% chance but look at how we're 92 pretty much across the board the next three days still 90 by Friday our chances for storms pick up again heading into the weekend about 40% same deal with Saturday Sunday chances for storms 30% 40% next Monday it's still very humid overnight low temperatures always the key for me to watch where those go just dropping into the lower 70s ladies back to you all right thank you Tom well, when you think of the 4th of July, you'll have to start thinking of it as an economic boom. We'll tell you how much Americans are expected to spend this year for the 4th and how much of that is comprised of hot dogs. Mm. Plus, planning to go see a fireworks show but don't know where to go? We have you covered this morning. We'll tell you about several 4th of July events happening around Central Virginia and which CBS Sixer will be out in the community that's ahead at 654. Welcome back at 623 in Mecklenburg County. We're continuing to follow a crash along Route 15 North. This is near Highway 49 and 2nd Street. Maybe you're traveling to Bugs Island today or back from Bugs Island for uh, the holiday and you might encounter that crash there. We're told by 511 expect delays, but not exactly sure what kind of lane closures we're seeing. Maybe some shoulder activity. I'll try to get an update, but right now we're just noting expect delays in Caroline County. Still standing water on the roadway Sparta Road between Alps Drive and Newton Road, all eastbound lanes they're closed due to that water from last night's storm. Something to keep an eye on. Now, if you live in Chesterfield, you're planning to go to the Chesterfield County celebration tonight. You're going to expect heavy traffic at 430 with gates opening at five o'clock. You're going to enter the celebrations for the fireworks there along Kraus Road, but you should know Courthouse Road. We are going to see closed southbound lanes starting at four o'clock this afternoon, and then the northbound lanes will be open. But again, you're going to see that increased traffic starting about four o'clock, Reba. All right, thanks, Caroline. Well, when you think of hot dogs, you probably don't think of them as a massive injection into the economy, but they kind of are. Yeah, Wallet Hub compiled some numbers and figured out Americans plan to spend $9.5 billion in food alone for the 4th of July. Some of that will go to the 150 million hot dogs that people are going to eat today. Another 3 billion will go to beer and wine and 6.5 billion to American flags. Now, Americans will drop another 2.7 billion bucks on fireworks, although we should point out that bills from the emergency room visits mm. for firework mishaps weren't part of the calculation. Wow. But still in food alone. In food alone. You know, we're I'm not, a, I'm not a hot dog eater, but hot dog eater. Oh, something about this day I am. My goodness. I actually have a survey on my Facebook page asking what is it you want to eat the most on this holiday? Burgers, hot dogs, sides, all that stuff. Sides. How about you, Tom? That's what it is. You know, you're, you're right. A couple days a year, hot dogs do look really good. And yeah. today is one of them, indeed. <laughs> then I'm done for the rest yeah. of the year. Yeah. <laughs> one and done. <laughs> Next year, we're going to be prepared so you can fire up the grill out there. Yes, thank you. I'll okay. be here, I'm sure. You're on it. What she calls out. Mental note. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <He's gonna be laughs> it's not even going to work. <laughs> well, good Independence Day celebration, of course, is the food, right? But on a hot day like this, it's important to keep in mind the temperature. Mm. We're we'll share some advice for the July 4th Grill Master and why what you do before you cook is key. Good morning, I'm Brendan King, live in Richmond. It's the 4th of July, it's Independence Day, which means spending time with your family and your friends, and of course, the fireworks like here at Doug Waddell. I'll tell you how the city plans to keep you and your loved ones safe. That's right after the break. This is CBS 6 This Morning. We have some good news for you. Well, sort of good news. We're not <laughs> expecting rain to have an impact on your fireworks tonight. Now, you are going to have to deal with the classic Central Virginia heat and humidity. Yeah. Hot. Good morning. It's Tuesday, July 4th. Happy Independence Day. I'm Kristen Lures and for Rob. And I'm Reba Hollingsworth. Thanks for staying with us this morning. Caroline would take a look at your 4th of July commute in just a bit. But first, let's take a look at your holiday forecast. What time? It's going to be a hot one time. That's true. And you can never say there aren't fireworks between the two of you. That's so silly. <laughs> <laughs> Were you able to see behind you? I did. Yes, I see you. <laughs> okay, that's all. <laughs> All right, let's show you what's going on this morning. We've got uh, a, a, a humid start, but the good news is not quite as humid as yesterday morning. If I'm trying to be subtle about anything with a hot July forecast, well, it's a little less humid. The dew point, though, being 70, it's still going to be a muggy day, but 
a little less than yesterday. That's a little bit less. How about that? 60s and 70s, mid 70s here in town. Today we'll hop up into the lower 90s. We'll go for a high of about 92 degrees. Yesterday we hit 94, so backing up a couple degrees. I'm trying to pull out a few positives here. And generally, lots of sunshine, at least to start. And then we'll have a partly sunny sky today, hot and humid. And we'll look for a high near 92. Ladies, back to you. All right, thanks, Tom. The city of Richmond is celebrating Independence Day by holding its annual event at Dogwood Dell. And the city says safety is a top priority. Now, you may recall it was one year ago when Richmond police announced it foiled an alleged July 4th mass shooting plot at the venue. CBS 6's Brendan King joins us live to tell us how police have prepared for the return of this event following last year's controversy. Good morning, Brendan. Good morning to you because it is illegal to shoot off your own fireworks here in the city of Richmond. Everyone is welcome to enjoy the free fireworks here at Dogwood Dale later tonight. Local bands greeting visitors to the park starting around 530 and the fireworks go off at 915. But listen, in this time of our nation, many people obviously concerned about safety and for good reason. So we reached out to the Richmond Police Department. And they tell us they are ready to respond to anything that comes their way. Tonight's event, a year after then Richmond Police Chief Gerald Smith claimed that the department had stopped a mass shooting, allegedly targeting the Dogwood Dell 4th of July celebration that happened in 2022. The Richmond Commonwealth Attorney's Office has since said there is no evidence pointing to Dogwood Dell as the target here, and neither of the two men arrested in the case are facing any charges relating to the actual alleged plot. Now, Richmond Police sent us a statement about tonight's celebration, and it reads, I, as always, we have taken every measure to help ensure the safety of our city, our residents, and our visitors. The Richmond Police Department prepared to support and respond with the help of our partners, the Virginia State Police and the Department of Capitol Police. So if you see anything that alarms you or looks suspicious, please call or text 911. And please keep this in mind. This is important. As part of the safety plan for Richmond Police in the city of Richmond, you are urged to leave your alcohol, your glass bottles, your booze at home. You are allowed a small cooler. All right, good advice. Thanks, Brendan. Now stay tuned because ahead at 653, yeah. we'll tell you about some of the other spots you can see fireworks right here in Central Virginia, including an event emceed by one of our very own reporters here at CBS 6. And we told you earlier about places that would be closed during the holiday, but there are several spots that will remain open. Some major chains like Target, Lowe's and Kroger will be open today for normal hours. Others like Whole Foods and Best Buy will be on reduced hours. For pharmacies like CVS and Walgreens, locations that are normally open 24 hours will maintain those normal hours, <clears throat> excuse me, but others may have limited hours or will be closed entirely, so double check with your location before heading out the door. Gyms may also be on modified hours as many spots like the Planet Fitness are independently owned, so you'll want to check with them as well. For locally owned businesses here in Central Virginia, check their website or give them a call to see if or when they'll be open. The Independence Day celebration at Central Virginia's largest military installation returned this year, featuring a fireworks display at Fort Greg Adams in Prince George County. It also had live music from American Idol 2022 alum Carrie Brockwell, who's from Chesterfield. Not only was it the first open to the public July 4th celebration there since before the pandemic, it's also the first celebration since the post redesignation back in April. Well, you know, it's not exactly a secret that sunscreen is beneficial to you, but with today being the fourth and summer in full swing, it's a good reminder just how vital it can be. Mm -hmm. For a deeper dive into how you should be keeping yourself safe, Caroline Colburn joins us. Good morning, Caroline. Good morning, guys. If you're going to the pool today, listen mm -hmm. up. Some good tips from the experts. I recently had the chance to speak with Dr. Kimberly Salkey. She's an associate professor of dermatology at VCU, and she pointed out that cumulative sun exposure is one of the most common causes of skin cancer, so every bit of protection counts. Dr. Salkey says the sun's rays are the highest between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., so try to remember to seek shade when you can during those hours. But sunscreen is the most important form of protection that you can give yourself, and she recommends it be a part of your daily routine, especially for your face. She also says the strength and when and how to apply and how often you should apply sunscreen are just as important. In an SPF of 30 blocks about 97% of the sun's rays, which is really effective, uh, but that depends on perfect use. So that means it takes about an ounce of sunscreen to cover the whole body. Uh, and then it needs to be applied about 15 or 20 minutes before you go out 
and it needs to be reapplied every two hours, which is a lot to ask. So got to keep it handy. Now, Dr. Salki also told me that even if you're someone who doesn't get outside much, you think this may not apply to you. Remember, plenty of rays can seep through your windows in your house or even your car, so you should not neglect it. Something that we all should keep in mind today. Now, traffic for you. We have picked up a broken down vehicle in New Kent County. This is Interstate 64 East, mile marker 216. The right shoulder in that area closed due to that uh, disabled vehicle. Hopefully, crews can get there and clear that up because we are seeing that right shoulder activity. In Mecklenburg County, we don't have real time traffic in this area, but we are seeing a crash reported by 511. This is Route 15 North near Highway 49 and 2nd Street, this rural part of Mecklenburg. Maybe if you're traveling to Bugs Island, you might encounter that crash that we're told just to expect delays. Not exactly sure of the lane closures in that area, uh, but something to keep an eye on. In Caroline County, still following standing water in the roadway, Sparta Road blocked between Alps Drive and Newton Road. That's going to be all your eastbound travel lanes there. It's been closed for about three hours now since we last checked uh, and still being reported as closed. So you're going to find an alternate route if you're traveling in that section of Caroline County and you need to go east this morning. Kristen. All right. Thank you, Caroline. A reminder if you're planning on heading out to the James River today to be cautious mm -hmm. in the wake of Lauren Winstead and Sarah Irway's deaths along the river Memorial Day of 2022. More than $125,000 has been invested in increased signage, updated maps, and other resources to help river goers stay safe. Officials encourage everyone to educate themselves before they get in the water. Always wear flotation devices and shoes and check for water levels. They also say inexperienced river goers should be with someone who is experienced. Now, many of you watching us are counting down the hours to where you can get the grill going for your 4th of July cookout. But before you do, you want to keep food safety in mind. I, Brendan King, had the chance to speak to Melissa Wright, Virginia Tech's Food Producer Technical Assistance Network Director. She says staying educated and prepared is key and that the most important factors to consider when cooking are temperature and keeping both food and utensils clean. Brendan also asked her which food you should keep your eyes on the most? I think two of the biggest things are undercooking your meat and then holding cold food too long so that it gets hot. Um, I think in the press release, the recommendation we have is two hours unless the temperature is above 90 and then you have one hour where you need to eat it or discard it. Yeah, and remember, we are expecting temperatures to get into the 90s today. Now, if you have any other food prep questions you'd like to know, you can email Melissa at foodbiz, that's B-I-Z, at V-T dot E-D-U. Well, Reba said it. It's going to be another hot one out there yeah. today, Tom.